Arcades. A classic concept of the creation of, well, Pac-Man? Maybe even before that? With each game, we strive ever closer to the glory that is the Luigi's Mansion arcade game. What, did you expect me to say something else? That game's fun. But anyways, today we're going to be looking at Nova Drift. An arcade-styled roguelike? Roguelite? Kind of both? Anyways, an arcade-style roguelike game where you zip around the screen, proving that drones are the best way to handle all your problems. So if you want to see blasting asteroids and realizing your thrusters just aren't fast enough, stick around and we'll see if this game is worth your time. Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever roguelike spotlight viewer's choice. <laughs> We'll explore Nova Drift's mechanics, check out a few of the various weapons you can use, and I'll break it down to its main components before giving it a rating out of 5 based on my experiences. Let's break down this arcade game turned RPG turned roguelike and look for a new high score. But before all that, let's talk about what Nova Drift is. Like I said before, Nova Drift is an arcade style shooter game. Sort of like Asteroids, which is a game you would only really know if you would be hitting 45 here soon. Or, well, you went to your local arcade. But instead of just shooting, well, asteroids, you're shooting ships with a wide variety of weapons. Also, you get level ups and get upgrades to get to the end of the game where you'll fight the Star Eater. Away, 120, which is a bit of an interesting number, but hey, it works. And of course, every 20 waves, you would fight a boss as you progress through from war machines to weird insect things. There's a wide variety of bosses. Well, that that's really all there is to the game. There's no plot, no story, none of that. Just pure unbridled arcade chaos. All right, let's cut to the chase before we get sucked into the next singularity. Gameplay. The game starts with you in the middle of the screen, and a couple of basic controls in the bottom right hand corner. And that's basically all you need to know to get a PhD in this game, at least for the controls. Minus a few settings in the pause menu. The gameplay is very simple, since it was styled after an arcade game. You left click to move, and you right click to shoot, and use your mouse to point at wherever you want to cease to exist. The complexity of the game doesn't come from the controls or even the movement. Though that is one of the important parts of the game because if you go to the edge of a screen, you fly off of it, you'll appear at the opposite side. But besides that, the only real complex part is the builds. And you see, there's a lot. Like, a lot. Holy Jesus. Between ships, weapons, abilities, you can get a crap ton of combinations I don't even know. And all these interactions cause some real chaos on your screen and make you utterly broken. Which, as we all know, is the best part of roguelikes. But going back to the abilities, there's a bunch of what I will call base abilities, which they are the beginning of a small tree of different upgrades you can find. And that's where the interesting part comes in. You see, you have to build the trees because maybe a base ability looks awful for your build, but you see abilities like Terminate that come up second in the tree and realize maybe picking up Skirmish isn't such a bad idea. You need to find out which abilities are worth working for and which aren't. And alongside this, you have to figure out what exactly works in your build because some of the weapons have Yu-Gi-Oh style text boxes on them the and can take at least a few reads to fully comprehend what's going on. And this is where you realize your PhD in controls won't be getting you too far in this game. It's all about the builds and I find that very good and gives a lot to the player. One last thing is that there's a very fun mechanic where you can actually break parts of enemy ships, causing them to take additional damage or have the inability to do some moves, which is really fun and interesting. Shout out to games that let me break parts on enemies. So honestly, I would give gameplay a five out of five. It's super fun to see what builds you can get going. And alongside that, the game gives you a bunch of modifiers and different game modes to play. And of course, endless mode. Megaloo, eat your heart out. Now that we've talked about gameplay and got hit by shooting so or two. Let's talk about visuals. This game walks an interesting line with its arcade style. Everything is made up of different parts and shapes, and while these are just orange or purple shapes, they look very nice, giving it simple style. Additionally, the background slowly shifts depending on how far you are on the run, mainly when fighting bosses, which gives a nice feeling of progression. The true balancing act of this game is the bullet hell aspect. If it isn't handled well, you won't be able to see anything your character is doing or anything that's going on. That being said, for the most part, you can clearly tell what's going on because everything is differently colored. Though there are times where it can be a bit confusing when things are on the screen, such as swarm bots. 
if you are using swarm bots and your enemies are using swarm bots, they are very similar color, no matter who's controlling it. And some bullets can blend in with yours if you aren't paying too much attention. While it's mostly well executed, there are a few times it can be hard to tell the difference between friend or foe. So with that in mind, I'm going to give visuals a 4 out of 5. And now that we found out that the swarm bots weren't actually ours, and you may or may not have gotten flashbanged by beating the final boss. Think fast, chuckle nuts. Let's talk about audio. And honestly, it's never felt so satisfying to explode a spaceship. Honestly, the sound effects in this game are great. It's super satisfying. With each time you explode a ship or break apart, you get a nice noise and even the shots aren't too bad. Maybe get a little annoying, but overall pretty good. Alongside that, the music is very good and very fitting of the style. I do have one small issue with it though. Hold it! At times it feels like there's just nothing going on, just no music and it feels very awkward. And then it just comes back at times. And I don't know if it's me being too focused on not flying my ship directly into the closest black hole, but it feels a little weird. But besides that, I do enjoy the music. I will give audio a four out of five for the weird issue. I'm not even sure if it's intended or not. No transitions. Replayability. Go. Like I said before, this game is heavily focused on builds. And the fact that it's an arcade game, it's all about getting that new high score and making sure you can achieve that. With that, there's a whole bunch of modifiers and challenges you can add to get higher score modifiers. But the only sad thing is that there isn't really any plot, but... Unlike some games, I don't think it really needs it since it's styled off of an arcade game and most arcade games don't really have a story. You just play it. And there is progression, not just with unlocking new unlocks and new abilities, but actually throughout the game. Again, unlike some games. But given all the different ships, weapons, modifiers, abilities, and even game modes, including using an endless mode for those who want to keep testing their abilities and builds past floor 120, it gives a lot of replayability, so I'll give it a 5 out of 5, especially if you want to go for any of those late game unlocks, because it can be quite a grind. Alright, you finished unlocking everything? Well, me neither. But we still have to continue on to difficulty. And this game will spit in your face if you let it. And like I said before, there's a lot of different modifiers. But looking at just the base game, it's one of those games that looks super easy until you actually start playing it. And realizing controlling the ship is a bit harder than you think. That on top of learning how exactly screen looping works and how you can use that to your advantage. You start realizing there's a few extra layers on this bullet hell flavored cake that might make it a bit harder than you think. That on top of reading your potentially Yu-Gi-Oh! link explanations on your weapons making you really think about how you want to do your build. Of course, once you get the movement down, it's not too bad. It's still decently difficult. And with getting the right build, you just know that's the tip of the difficulty iceberg. It's just downhill from there. But again, just based off of base difficulty, I will give it a 3 out of 5. A bit hard to get into, but once you realize how the movement works and how you want to do your build, it's not too bad. But you'll still likely die a good amount exploding into a million little pieces and stardust wait why was the subscribe and like buttons in there huh i guess you guys should click those or something whoa 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 where do you think you're going we haven't talked about the commenter who recommended this game so far and that would be none other than chronos 93 thank you for your recommendation and of course if you want your recommendation to be featured in the next one of these place it down in the comments and if it gets the most likes and follows these rules, it will be featured in the next roguelike spotlight viewer's choice. But enough with all that, we all know why you're here. Let's talk about that rating. After six plus hours of blasting ships and realizing I'm not one for crash builds, this game really kept me coming back for more and wanting me to just keep playing it. Every run feels interesting and it's just fun, honestly. I will give this game four automatic turns out of five. A great rendition of an arcade-styled roguelike. But is it worth your time, money, and possible loss of eyesight after being the final boss? Well, if you like arcade games, particularly those like Asteroids and slash or like roguelike games with lots of build complexity, then I would say of course, you should go check it out. The link in the game will be in the description. Though, throughout this video, you may have seen me making a few punches at another game that I reviewed and I didn't really enjoy. If you want to see my full thoughts on Mega Loot, that game, check out this video here. Another very build heavy game, but only focuses on loot. 